The quilt may seem as American as apple pie, but it did not originate in America. Hi, I'm Shelley Ziegert, and welcome to Why Quilts Matter. Quilting is an ancient technique predating written history and used by early civilizations in China, Turkey, and Egypt. The term comes from the Latin word colcita, meaning stuffed sack or mattress. The quilt as we know it originated in 17th century England, where calico and chintz were used to form decorative bed covers. Whole cloth quilts, one large piece quilted to other layers, were common, while others featured a more formal central medallion and border. American colonists copied European-style quilts, often backing the whole with rough, coarse, homemade Lindsay Woolsey. The scarcity of imported fabric made complicated appliques difficult to achieve. Quilts made of recycled bits and pieces quickly became more common. This was the beginning of the American piece quilt, which in the 19th century morphed into the familiar block-style quilt, pieced block by block and then sewn together. It was a style that suited the young America as no block was more important than any other and all were needed to form a unified whole. This very American technique spawned a new artistic freedom. Makers left behind the decorative floral effects and the medallion style and created an endless number of creative designs and patterns, many with evocative names, simply by juxtaposing shapes and colors. As America began to produce its own fabrics, makers chose their materials more carefully, using color and pattern to even greater effect. In today's quilt world, quilts made before the 1950s are known as antique quilts. In the 1960s, contemporary quilts arrived on the scene. There are two main categories, traditional, still made by millions using traditional composition and patterns, and art or studio quilts that are not made for a bed cover at all, but are made as works of art. By abandoning the design and construction requirements of a functional quilt, art quilt makers freed themselves, as early block quilters once did, from the strictures of the old ways. Their quilts may start with traditional materials and construction, but now often incorporate collage, photography, and printmaking. Makers stretch or reshape the conventional rectangle and incorporate charged emotional, political, or confessional subject matter to create a reaction in the viewer. While we can all learn to identify the category to which a particular quilt belongs, it takes more practice to recognize its quality, its importance or rarity, to have what many call a good eye. How do we get one of those? In this episode, Quilts 101 goes back to basics, explaining how to recognize a quilt, and then some. What is a quilt? It seems an odd question. Surely we all know a quilt when we see one, or do we? We may recognize the patchwork number on our neighbor's bed, but what about the politically charged piece of fiber art on the gallery wall? Is it to a quilt? Or is it not? It seems that there are a number of answers to this question. Some people relate strongly to quilts that consist of recycled fabric and view this as a true quilt. A quilt is a recycled work of art. It's recycled because it takes uh, disparate pieces of cloth. Uh, traditionally, cloth from clothing, from uh, bed covers, from any place that you had old textile that had worn out its use in that way, and it recycles those pieces into a new roll. Some acknowledge only the traditional form for a quilt, three layers, and some view the intention of the artist as the most important. In the absence of consensus, perhaps the best answer is to look at the common threads in all of the descriptions. What do most people agree on? Generally, a quilt is considered three layers stitched together. There's exceptions to every rule because there are quilts that have no batting because they were summer quilts. And so 
they don't have three layers, but generally it's considered three layers sewn together.